GT Countdown. It's party time! Top 10 Guiltiest Pleasures. Guilty pleasures in video games can fall into two categories. Games you probably shouldn't be spending your time on because they're not very good or original, or games that are so overtly offensive that you have to huddle in your bedroom and lock the door for fear of someone walking in on you. Sure, we could include lots of dubious games from Japan that go far beyond what we're presenting, but that would take all the fun out of it. We find all sorts of excuses to justify excessive playing, but the following entries can be downright impossible to defend. Shame on us. We should know better. Number 10. Karaoke Revolution. Not everyone is willing to throw caution to the wind and belt out their favorite tunes in front of a live audience. For the small percentage that would rather test their pipes in private or in the comfort of friends, Karaoke Revolution gives closet pop stars a chance to rock out, minus those uncomfortable feelings of regret. So if need be, lock the doors, hide out in the basement, soundproof your living room, basically do whatever it takes to sing like Britney Spears, yet still manage to keep your dignity intact. This game has made us look like fools on too many occasions, primarily because it's one of those games that our casual friends have no problems playing. Number 9. Animal Crossing. You wouldn't expect it from its cute exterior, but Animal Crossing is a haven for greed, obsessive compulsive behavior, and selfishness. Anyone who's spent time there is made nice with the locals just to get expensive gifts, chopped down neighbors' trees, trampled on gardens, and dealt with shady black market dealers. They plunder the environment, capturing and selling dozens of rare fish and insects for their own personal gain, and they stuff every corner of their mansions with treasures and expensive electronics. If you've played Animal Crossing for any amount of time, you know you're guilty of all these things, and you loved every minute of it. But worst of all is that the game looks like it's been made for three-year-olds, yet there we sit as full-grown adults burning the hours away. Number 8. State of Emergency. Rockstar's lavish use of video game violence might have given the company a tainted reputation with soccer moms everywhere, but we honestly wouldn't want it any other way. Well, except for the case of State of Emergency, where it's basically the only hook the game has. Crude, though hilarious, over-the-top mayhem provides ample reasons why you're better off playing this game alone. We find it's best if loved ones don't witness you slaughtering innocent civilians and then beating them with their own heads. Don't even give them the chance to try and put you in therapy or question your moral upbringing. Check your conscience at the door, because we know how hard it is to resist the call of unloading a chain gun into a crowded mall. Number 7. Kingdom Hearts. Disney characters in the cast of Square Enix's most popular RPGs. It can either be one of those instances of two great tastes that go great together, or the stuff of a fanfic nightmare. In spite of whatever it may mean to you, one thing is certain, there's lots of money in this alchemical mix. The Kingdom Hearts formula works for a lot of people, admittedly, some of us too, but make no mistake about this being a guilty pleasure. Have you ever been slightly embarrassed when someone walked in on you in the middle of a cheesy JRPG cutscene? It's only amplified when it's Goofy and Sephiroth, or Dumbo and Yuffie. We rest our case. Number 6. Manhunt. Though violence in video games has been around for a long time, Manhunt ran away with the concept, allowing players to overindulge in a gruesome blood sport with very little redeeming social value. It wasn't just the simple fact your objective was to murder individuals, but rather the emphasis on murdering them in as gruesome a way as possible. Of course, one could simply pick up a gun and get the job done quickly, but those with truly warped minds could savor the kill with up-close and personal tactics. Lying in wait in the shadows only heightened the sense of excitement, making this game's brand of vigilantism one you viewed with your hands over your eyes. Number 5. That's right, we love the camera. Leisure Suit Larry. Me too, Iggy. Sex has always sold games, but when Tappin' It replaces Link seeking the Triforce, then it becomes hard to boast playing through the full Leisure Suit Larry catalog. There's something I want to show you. <laughs> you can mask your interest in the witty writing and the franchise's ties to the nostalgic adventure genre, but when you'd rather bonk the damsel in distress than rescue her, the priorities are a little askew. I have never felt so horny for a man in your weight class in all of my life. We're not saying you shouldn't play these games. Some of them are classics. Just don't leave any evidence. <laughs> yes! I've been so bad! Number four. 
Pokemon. It's rare that a game can be released in basically the same exact form as it was in the mid-90s and still get us to buy it. That's exactly what Pokemon has been doing to us for over a decade. Whether it's the collector residing deep inside our psyche, the simple yet deceptively deep gameplay, or the relative trickle of new Pokemon that are unveiled each time, we always manage to boot the game up once again when a new entry is released. And we hate ourselves for it. Number 3. Grand Theft Auto. Compelling story, open world exploration, death defying stunts, blah blah blah. Most sessions of Grand Theft Auto eventually devolve into taking out a shotgun and shooting some poor pedestrian in the face. Or driving over piles of them standing on the street. Granted, the bloodlust has been quelled more and more with each new installment, but the infectious rage that spread across the gaming massive when GTA 3 was released was palpable. Violence in video games definitely doesn't make people kill, but we'd be lying if we said there aren't any moments in every one of these games that we prefer a lot of our loved ones don't experience. Number 2 DOA Extreme Beach Volleyball when you're playing a fighting game that stars impossibly proportioned women in skimpy clothes, you can at least say that it's your competitive spirit and love of a good fight that keep you playing. When you're watching those same girls take a break at the beach to rub lotion on each other, strike provocative poses on palm trees, and bop around a volleyball in the sun, it's apparent to everyone that you're just a huge pervert. If you log enough hours into the game to achieve the ultimate goal, getting the voluptuous virtual vixen of your choice into the super skimpy Venus swimsuit, you'll probably want to keep the pleasure and shame to yourself. This is the only entry on this list that doesn't really include a viable game. Number 1 World of Warcraft True guilty pleasure has a number, and at the moment it's the 11.5 million souls set adrift by this truly massive MMO. World of Warcraft is a bona fide phenomenon, not for its genre-defining conventions nor its continental user base, but for the cold sweat it inspires in the player with a social life to lose. It's the bane of boredom and the proprietor of procrastination, every girlfriend's worst fear and every job interviewer's worst nightmare. But in spite of WoW's gleeful gear for grind and gold, there's not much we'd change about it. The series has gotten its narcotic formula down to a science, and we can't wait for the next finger-clicking fix. With few other games coming close to its level of digital depravity, World of Warcraft unabashedly earns the title of gaming's guiltiest pleasure of all time. 